Kraft presents The Great Gildersleeve. Yeah. The Kraft Cheese Company, makers of parquet margarine and a complete line of famous quality food products, presents Harold Perry as The Great Gildersleeve. Kraft brings you The Great Gildersleeve every week at this time, written by John Whedon and Sam Moore. We'll hear from The Great Gildersleeve in just a moment. If you're taking the family on a picnic this Memorial Day, surprise them with a variety of tempting treats made with Pabstet, the delicious golden cheese food. Pabstet goes a long way toward satisfying hearty appetites because Pabstet is so delicious in so many appetizing ways. For example, blend a smooth, luscious Pabstet cheese sauce into a macaroni loaf or a molded cheese loaf or a molded vegetable ring. They're easy to prepare and delicious on an outing. Dates or prunes stuffed with Pabstet make another grand picnic treat. And, of course, it goes without saying that Pabstet is wonderful as a sandwich spread, rich in mellow cheddar cheese flavor. Remember, too, that Pabstet adds nourishing goodness, muscle-building proteins, food energy, milk minerals, and vitamin A. So head up your shopping list with Pabstet, the delicious golden cheese food. Don't forget, the name is Pabstet. <laughs> Let's follow once more the ups and downs in the career of Throckmorton P. Gildersleeve. Last week, he had one of his ups. At the annual outing given for the city employees, he stole the show with his fruity baritone and forced Mayor Terwilliger to retire in confusion. And today we find him still riding the crest of that wave as he strolls down Main Street with his campaign manager, Judge Hooker, about to enter Floyd Munson's barber shop. After you, Gildy. No, no, after you, Judge. I insist, after you. No, after you. Well, well, then. then. Well, make up your mind. I'll make up yours. All right. After me. Close the door, gents. You're letting in flies. Oh, hello, Floyd. How's business? How's the wife? That's fine. Hi, Commissioner. Thought it was about time you were coming around. Oh, I'm overdue, Floyd. Overdue. But I haven't had time. Well, I haven't one for a real haircut today. Just a little trim. Okay. Climb right up in the chair there. Hi, Judge. Good day, Floyd. Make yourself at home with the magazines there. It's a new Esquire that's worth looking at. I'm not interested in Esquire, Floyd. I... Where is it? Well, it's there somewhere. <laughs> Don't miss the Varga girl. Brother, that girl telephones in the darndest positions. <laughs> well, how you been, Commissioner? Well, I can't complain, Floyd. Can't complain. I hear where you knocked him dead at the mayor's picnic the other day. Oh, hardly that, Floyd. But did you see what the indicator said about me? Yeah, I saw that. Judge, you've got the newspaper clipping there. Read it to Floyd. But I told you I read it. Uh, that's all right. Read it again, Judge. I like to hear it. Judge. Huh? What's that? Put down the Esquire and read us that clipping from the indicator again, will you? Oh, certainly. I got it right here. Yeah, read us the part about the ovation. This is from the indicator, Floyd. It's an editorial. I know. I read it. It says, at the recent annual outing of the city employees of Summerfield, Mr. Gildersleeve received an impressive ovation. How do you like that? An impressive ovation? Head down a little, Commissioner, please. Oh, yes, yes. Listen, do you want me to read this or don't you? Oh, go ahead, Judge. Read it. Quiet, Floyd, quiet. Mr. Gildersleeve received an impressive ovation and proved himself a real vote-getter with a golden voice and a knack of swaying crowds. <laughs> Not bad, eh, Floyd? A real vote-getter. Wait a minute. Listen to this. Behind this smart campaigning may be seen the guiding hand of his astute campaign manager, Judge Horace Hooker. Yeah, uh, astute. Tss. We predict that between them, they'll give Mayor Terwilliger a real run for his money. Pretty swell right up, eh, Floyd? Yes, it is, Commissioner. I only hope you're not going to forget your friends when you get up there in the mayor's office. Oh, uh, don't worry, Floyd. Mayor Gildersleeve will know who his real friends are, Floyd. I'll see to that. What do you mean, Judge? I think you know what I mean. Why, I've been for Mr. Gildersleeve right along. You know that. Floyd, don't add perjury to your other sins. What? They're numerous enough already. Now, Judge. You got me all wrong, Judge. Why, only the other... You're day. a Terwilliger man, and you know it. Floyd, is this true? Commissioner, I hope I may die tomorrow if I... Why, only the other day. Floyd. Well, sure, I cut the mayor's hair, sure. Business is business. I got to be polite to him, don't I? Perhaps. But you don't have to run his political errands for him. You don't have to be his stooge. Now, Judge, I think that's going a little far. Easy, Horace. Let's not be calling any harsh names. You can't blame a man just because he cuts somebody's hair. Cutting hair is my business. Yeah, and you'd cut a throat just as quickly. Now, Horace. <laughs> Put on that razor, Floyd. Let's straighten this out. 
<laughs> well, I think the judge owes me an apology. Apology for what? Now, now, I think Floyd sees which way the political wind is blowing, Judge. You're darn right I do. I feel sure he's going to vote the way his conscience tells him to. Aren't you, Floyd? You're darn right I am. Then why, may I ask, has he consistently refused to lend your campaign any assistance whatsoever? Judge, how can you say that? I've been for the commissioner here right along. Why, only the Listen, other day I we said... need office space for our headquarters. The floor above this shop is empty, and it would be ideal. No, but every just... time that I've asked you to let us use it, you've hemmed and hawed and stalled around. Now, how about it? Yes, Floyd, how about it? Well, gosh, fellas, you, you put me in kind of a difficult position. How now. about it, Floyd? Well, voting for Mr. Gildersleeve is one thing, but having his headquarters right here in the shop... Gosh, I'm liable to lose some trade that way. Only the undesirable trade, Floyd. The time has come, Floyd, for every man to make his choice and declare himself. Is it yes or no? Well, well, all right. Fine, Mr. I knew you would, Floyd. Now, Judge, you get busy and see if you can rustle up some office furniture. I don't suppose there's any up there, Floyd. Oh, nothing but an old piano. Well, we need a couple of desks and some chairs and, you know, and some fires. Yeah, I'll get right on it, Gildy. I think I even know where I can borrow an electric fan. Great. I'll run home and see if I can round up some volunteer workers. Hey, let me up, Floyd. Yeah, but the haircut, I haven't finished, Commissioner. Oh, we'll call it done. Finish it some other time. Here, keep the change. Say, you don't let any moss grow, do you? Not me. Uh-oh, telephone. Yeah, I'll take it. Oh. Gildersleeve headquarters. She and I had a nice, quiet little business here. Who left that right inside the door? Is that you, Uncle Mort? Certainly it's me. Look at this hallway. Baseball gloves, comic books. It's lucky I didn't break my neck. Where's Leroy? He's up in his room. He's got his commando gang up there. Well, they better stay there. I've got some telephoning to do. Well, I won't bother you. I'm going to the movies. Oh, not this afternoon, my dear. I need your help. Oh, Uncle Mort. Yeah, where's Bertie? I need you both this afternoon. Oh, Bertie! Bertie! Oh, gosh, this always happens. You calling me, Mr. Gillsleeve? Yeah, Bertie. I thought I heard your golden voice. No, Bertie. <laughs> That's what it said in the paper, Mr. Gilsey. Well, never mind that. I wonder if you'd like to do a little political work this afternoon, Bertie. What kind of political work, Mr. Gilsey? Well, we're opening up our new headquarters downtown, and there's quite a few things to be done. Yes, sir. Political work, you say? Well, it'll be a definite contribution to my campaign, but it's not anything like making speeches. No, sir. Is there anything like sweeping and dusting out the office? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's it, Bertie. But Marjorie will help you, won't you, my dear? Well. What's that? Oh, darn those kids. How about it, Marjorie? Will you help Bertie get the new headquarters ready? Well, I don't see why it has to be cleaned on the one afternoon the Cary Grant pictures at the Majestic. Marjorie, Cary Grant will be back again someday. Yes, but by that time I'll be an old woman. Oh, my God. Ye gods, what are those kids doing up there? If that racket starts again, I'm going up there myself. And you, young lady, you're going to help me this afternoon. All right. Don't feel bad, honey. We all got to help your uncle. We all got to give up something. I'm going to have to give up doing the laundry this afternoon. <laughs> <laughs> yes, there you are, my dear. Bertie gives up her laundry. You give up Cary Grant. <laughs> Cheer up. It'll all be over on June the 20th. Because I'm head of the commandos. Well, the whole, the whole thing, thing was my idea, so I get, to get to use it I get first. first. Oh, for corn's sake, the commandos will please come to order. What's that mean? Peggy, don't you know anything? Everybody knows what come to order means. Well, I don't. What does it mean, Leroy? It means shut up. Now, come to order. Well, I don't see why you always have to be the boss. Who said you were the boss, anyway? Do we have to go all over that again? Come to order. Okay. I bet there's a catch to it. There's no catch, Whitey. Gosh, don't you understand? We gotta be systematic. We gotta vote and decide this question. What question? What have we been arguing about for half an hour? If we just take a vote on it, the majority can decide. Well, for corn's sake, why didn't you say so? Okay, let's vote. Wait a minute. First, everybody gets a chance to speak. Me first. Why do you have to be first? What difference does that make? It doesn't make any difference who goes first. I'm offering to go first just to give you the idea. Okay, go ahead. Gosh. Okay. <clears throat> Fellow commandos, 
I believe I should be the first one to use the new flamethrower because I am head of the commandos, and so naturally I should go first. Who said you were the head? Piggy, that's all settled. Go ahead and make your speech. Why does he go next? What difference does it make? Leroy just told you it doesn't make any difference. <clears throat> Fellow commandos, I believe I should be the first to use the new flamethrower because it was my idea. I thought of the whole thing. I thank you. Very good, Piggy. Okay, Whitey, you're next. Well, I think I should get first shot because my father owns the blowtorch, and if I don't, I'll take it home. Hey, that's well, no fair! <laughs> If you do that, you're a poor sport, Whitey. Besides, who thought of it in the first place? I don't care. Well, let's get this over with. Let's have the vote. Who do you vote for, Whitey? I vote for me. <laughs> you're not supposed to vote for yourself, you dope. Who do you vote for, pig? Me. Then I'll vote for myself, too. Only I forgot to tell you, in case of a tie, the chairman wins. Hey, oh, that's don't okay. You can't you can't you can't you can't now look what you did. Is that you, Unc? You know who it is. Open the door. Okay. Now, what's going on in here, young man? Oh, nothing, Unc. Oh, not a thing, Mr. Gildersleeve. We were just playing, Mr. Gildersleeve. I never heard such yelling and screaming in my life. Now, what's it all about? Oh, nothing. We were just having a little discussion, and then, then we took a vote, just like in Congress. I don't believe even Congress could make that much noise. <laughs> What were you discussing? Oh, we were talking about who gets first shot with our new flamethrower. Oh, <laughs> flamethrower. What are you boys using for a flamethrower? Here it is, Mr. Gildersleeve. It isn't a flamethrower, really. It's, it's just my father's blowtorch. Oh, well, uh, blowtorch? <laughs> Leroy, Piggy, all of you stand back. Get away from that thing. There's nothing to be afraid of, Unc. We carried it over here. We'll carry it right back. Is it loaded? Yeah, she's all ready to squirt. You want to take a shot, Mr. Gildersleeve? <laughs> no, thank you. Now, I'll speak to whoever lets you have it. I can promise you that. Turn a bunch of kids loose with a red-hot blowtorch. Who told you you could have it? Who let you have it? Well, <clears throat> Whitey's father wasn't using it, so... Well, we didn't think he'd mind. Leroy, that is stealing. Boys, I'm surprised at you. This is the kind of thing that leads to gangsterism. Oh, it couldn't, Uncle. We're just commandos. Yeah. When you start stealing blowtorches, you're gangsters, Leroy. Now, why can't you boys find some wholesome occupation for your time? There ain't any. There aren't any. Oh. It, uh... <laughs> well, I'll provide one for you. I'll give you boys an assignment much more important than playing commando. I'll give you a chance to help the whole community. Is it work, Unc? <laughs> Let me explain it in my own way, Leroy. As you boys probably know, I'm running for mayor of Summerfield. Yeah, I saw you win the pie-eating contest at the picnic. <laughs> uh, cute. <laughs> Well, Mayor Terwilliger has got posters up all over town with his picture on them, telling people to vote for him. Now, I want to put some posters around with my picture on them. And if you boys will distribute my posters, you'll be doing the city of Summerfield a big favor. Now, doesn't that appeal to your patriotism? Perhaps I haven't made that quite clear. Oh, yeah, it's pretty clear. <laughs> I'm offering you, commandos, a chance to fight the forces of corruption in this town. Give Summerfield a good, honest government. What do you say? Uh, I forgot to mention, each commando gets 50 cents when the job is done. The great Gildersleeve will be with us again in just a few seconds. Of course, no one's wasting important leftovers these days. But do you know the trick of making leftovers not seem like leftovers at all? Well, it's easy with Pabstet, the delicious golden cheese food. First, you make a smooth, luscious cheese sauce with Pabstet and a little milk. And then pour this appetizing Pabstet cheese sauce over leftovers of meat, fish, vegetables, or rice, fixed any way you like. And presto, Pabstet has helped provide you with a brand new main dish, rich in mellow cheddar cheese flavor. You can serve Pabstet in a variety of other ways, too. Melted with macaroni for a tempting casserole dish. Toasted in sandwiches or sliced for serving with dessert. And remember, Pabstead is wholesome and nourishing. A real favorite with children. So watch your dealer's stocks, and whenever you can, buy Pabstead. Ask for the delicious golden cheese food of a hundred uses, Pabstead. <laughs> Now, 
Now let's get back to the great Gildersleeve. An afternoon of hard work by everyone but the candidate himself has put his headquarters in pretty good shape. But uh, there's just one difficulty. Nobody has come near the place. Gildersleeve, however, is leaving no stone unturned. He's keeping open in the evening, too. And we find him now coming back from supper to relieve his friend, Mr. Peavy. Well, Peavy, anything happened while I was out? No, Mr. Gildersleeve, nothing happened. <laughs> At least, nothing worth mentioning. Ah, uh, in politics, Peavy, anything may be significant. Now, what happened and when? Well, about five minutes past seven, a mouse ran across the floor. <laughs> a mouse, Peavy. I thought you might be passing up something important. Well, that's all that happened. I can show you his hole if you think it's worth following up. <laughs> let it go, Peavy, let it go. I can't understand why more people don't drop in here. Aren't there any politicians in this town? Don't the voters want to be informed? Well, here comes somebody, maybe yeah. a voter. Ah, good evening, candidate. Hi, Peavy. It's only Hooker. Darn it, Judge. We haven't had a customer here all day. Yeah, things have been pretty quiet. Well, give yourself a little time, boys. Takes a while to get things rolling. Did you get the posters out, Gildy? Yeah, Leroy and some of his little friends took them out this afternoon. They were very enthusiastic. Fine, fine. Oh, uh, I had a call from Mrs. Pettiborn at the Woman's Club. She wanted you to sing for them next week. I'm too busy to be going around singing, Judge. That's what I told her. It must be terrible to be so popular, Gildy. Especially with the women. Anyway, those women aren't women. No women are women when you get a bunch of them together. Well, no, I, I wouldn't say that. <laughs> <laughs> I saw a group of young ladies in the trolley car this afternoon. Lovely. Peavy. <laughs> Peavy, what's come over you? I don't know, but I rode two blocks past my store. <laughs> Well, here comes somebody. Don't worry, it won't be anybody. Hi, Floyd. Yeah, what did I tell you? Well, boys, how's the campaign coming on? Nobody even knows we're here, Floyd. We might as well go home. Home? What's the use of going there? If you got a headquarters, you might as well get some use of it. What do you mean, Floyd? I told the wife I was coming down here to help get you fellas organized. She didn't believe it for a while, but I convinced her. So what? Well, brought a deck of cards with me. Ooh. <laughs> That's a good idea, Floyd. Why should we sit here all night and just worry? Well, we uh, might play just a few hands. Sure, nobody wants to play poker all night. No. Pull up a chair, Judge. Pull up a chair, Peavy. Oh, I, I don't think I'd better, Floyd. I, I think I'll just be running along. Oh, no, you don't, Peavy. Your wife's out and we need at least four players. But I don't really understand the game, Mr. Gildersleeve. Yeah. <laughs> we'll teach you, Peavy. Eh, Floyd? <laughs> Call. What do you got this time, Peavy? Well, it really doesn't amount to much. All I've got is three queens and then these two eights. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm licked. Telephone. You take it, Judge. Another hand, boys. Yeah, deal faster. I'll never get even. Gildersleeve headquarters. I'm sorry, Mr. Gildersleeve is very busy right now. This is campaign manager. Could I give him a message? Must be long distance the way the judge is shouting. Yeah? Yes? In just a minute, I'll ask him. It's the president of the Kiwanis Club, Gildy. They're giving a smoker Friday night, and they want to know if you'll be the guest of honor. Oh, tell them I'd be only too happy. I suppose they'll want me to say a few words. Mr. Gildersleeve says that he'd be only too happy to say a few words. Yeah, ask him what topic they'd like me to speak on, Judge. Oh? Oh, I see. But just a minute. They don't want you to speak, Gildy. They want you to sing. Sing? What is this? I'm a busy man, Judge. I'm trying to run a campaign. Tell him certainly not. Tss. I'm sorry, Mr. Gildersleeve is extremely busy with his campaigning these days, and he... What's that? Eight hundred. Dollars? Hold the wire. He says if you'll do it, he can practically guarantee you eight hundred votes. You better grab it, Gildy. Say, for eight hundred votes, I'd sing all night. Mr. Gildersleeve would be delighted. He'll be there with his music. Well, what do you know about that? You're getting to be a regular thrush, Commissioner. Gildy, I've got it. I've got it. By golly, I've got it. You've got what? The old fox has done it again. The old Look, now, how did Pappy O'Daniel get to be governor of Texas? Oh, Daniel, ain't he the guy that used to sing past the biscuits, Pappy? That's right. He toured the state with a band, and he sang his way right into office. 
There's the keynote of your campaign. By George Horace, maybe you've stumbled onto something there. Stumbled my eye. Yeah, you know, all you need is a good campaign song, Commissioner. Look, like this one. Oh, brother. Floyd, where'd you get that piano? I don't know. It came with the joint. Yes. <laughs> now, listen. All vote for guilty, guilty. Gildersleeve's a grand old name. No, 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 no. Okay. I've got it. Oh, what a pal is guilty. Oh, oh what, what a pal, pal is guilty. Is he, he, he. Oh, no, no, boys. That's no good. Wait a minute. Oh, here's one. All Gildersleeve. Sweet Gildersleeve. Oh, mayors come and mayors may go. Um, now what? Uh, we still have him, so do not grieve, yes, but vote for him on June the 20th. <laughs> <laughs> hey, fellas, this is kind of fun. Yeah, let's take it again. Hey, Peavy, how's to run down the block and bring up a couple of bottles of Coca-Cola? What do you say? Huh? Yeah, right. Ready? Oh, oh Gildersleeve, sweet Headquarters, Gildersleeve speaking. What? Leroy? What's he done? Now, see here, you can't do that. You hold on, I'll be right down there. What's wrong, Gildy? Leroy, they got him down to police headquarters. What for? Darn if I know. I thought he was home in bed, Judge. Anyway, it's persecution, that's what it is. By George, if Terwilliger's back of this, I'll have the law on him. Come on, fellas. Come on, Floyd. Come on, Peavy. <laughs> Sir, I'll tell this two for a nickel stooge of Mayor Terwilliger. That's right. You tell him, Commissioner. Now you fellas had better let me handle this. Terwilliger can't push me around, and he can't push my family around either. Gildy, for heaven's sake, be tactful. Tactful. You're an appeaser, you old goat. Quiet. Now, I think that we should leave Floyd and Peavy outside here. Okay. If you need any help, Commissioner, just holler. Unc, don't let him put me in jail. I want to go home. Uh, don't worry, Leroy. Now, see here, Chief. I'm not going to stand for this. Gildy, please. You can't push me around just because Terwilliger is mayor. And if I... Now, well, now, wait a minute, Commissioner. Nobody's pushing anybody around yet. So let's not start anything, shall we? That's what I've been telling him, Chief. Shut up, Gildersleeve, and let me represent Leroy. Well, he's my nephew, and I... Shut up! Give me a cigar. Uh, cigar? Uh, here. Thank you. Have a cigar, Chief. Well, <laughs> much obliged, Judge. Now... What's my young friend here charged with? Well, I haven't been able to figure out the law on a judge. It might be a 92A, and then on the other hand, it might be a 316. I'm... What have you been doing, Leroy? Nothing, Unc. Will you kindly let me handle this, Gildersleeves? Forget the law, Chief. What is it the boy's done? Well, he went around town, and all the Terwilliger posters he could find, he put Hitler mustaches on them. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, uh, how could you do such a thing, Leroy? I was just trying to help you out, Unc. Don't let him put me in jail. Now, don't you worry, Leroy. Look, Chief, can't we just forget this whole thing? Well, I'd like to, Judge, but Mayor Terwilliger's pretty sore about this. He wants the guilty party punished. Yeah, Terwilliger, mm -hmm. eh? This is political persecution, that's what it is. Oh, no, 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 it's not. Oh, yes, it is. You're his chief of police, and he wants you to hamstring my campaign. I know. Any charge is good enough to throw at Gildersleeve. Gildy, please. Now, you're all wrong, Mr. Gildersleeve. Why, if you want to know, I had a complaint an hour ago about a terrible racket going on down at your headquarters. But did I do anything about it? I didn't even bother to call you. Racket, you say? Well, that was the complaint, disturbing the neighbors. Yeah, but, Chief, we weren't making any racket. We were just singing. That's right, Chief. A little close harmony, that's all. Well, I figured it was something like that. But you know how these nuts are. They call up all the time, always squawking about some little thing. Yeah, I know. Uh, 
You were harmonizing, huh? Yes. Too bad we didn't have the chief there, Gildy. He sings a wonderful bass. He does? Yeah. Well, that's just what we needed. Well, I'm no Caruso. Or... Well, the judge is no Lily Pons, either. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't we just run through it once, Judge, while we've got the chief here? Go get the boys, Judge. Well, this is very irregular, but if, uh... Boys, Peavy, come in here. Uh, M is for the million things she gave me. Come on, Chief. O means that only she's that she's growing old. Oh, you're great, Chief. <laughs> she is for the tears she shed to PB. Put them all together, they spell mud. The word that means the world to me, the world to me. <laughs> hey, that was wonderful, Chief. You were great. Well, we were all good. I think we could do even better. Hey, Unc! Uh, Leroy, what are you doing up? It's way past your bedtime. <laughs> we better send the boy home, eh, Chief? Well, it could be a little irregular, but if the judge is willing to close one eye, I'll close the other. Run along home, Leroy. I'll close the judge's eye. <laughs> all right, fellas. All together. M is more than a million things she gave me. Oh, me told me that she's growing old, oh, she's growing old. <laughs> For the many things she gave me Oh, means up oh. oh, it's awfully late Better look in and see if Leroy got home all right Uh, look at him lying there Sleeping so peacefully Cute little fella All the cares of the day forgotten Never a thought for the morrow Fine boy I holler at him a lot But if you only knew I love every hair on his cunning little head <laughs> Sweet dreams, Leroy. What a character. Oh, good night, everybody. <laughs> program is directed by Claude Sweet. This is Ken Carpenter speaking for the Kraft Cheese Company, makers of Parquet Mars Food and a complete line of famous quality food products. Kraft invites you to listen again next week for the further adventures of the Great Gildersleeve. When warm weather sends your family's appetite into a slump, liven up interest in foods with the taste-tingling flavor tang of Kraft Salad Mustard. Yes, you can get Kraft quality in mustard, too. And this light, golden, creamy, smooth salad mustard is spiced just right for most everyone's taste. You can serve Kraft salad mustard in dozens of appetite-rousing ways. Blended into tasty relishes and sandwich fillings spread on sausage and cold meat cuts or added to salad dressings for extra flavor zest. What's more, Kraft salad mustard is grand to use in cooking. Blended into a golden sauce for hot-cooked vegetables or added to a tempting cheese fondue or Welsh rabbit. Then there's another craft quality mustard you'll want to try, a sharper variety with horseradish added. Buy them both for variety. Craft mustard with horseradish and that popular favorite tangy golden craft salad mustard. This is the National